Mark Rogers TV, always talking college football 24 7 365. And in this discussion, you could call it almost an old Big East discussion. We'll talk a little West Virginia and a little pit with Mike Oste. You can join him on Trip Life Radio, uh, talking uh, college football amongst uh, a ton of other sports as well. Mike, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on and had some great college games. And then the Monday morning quarterbacking where the dust kind of settled. There's also been a little controversy the day after some of these. So it's absolutely interesting for shows like this. Yes, we always enjoy that. Uh, that's yeah. why we're here. It, it's fun to speculate. It's fun to analyze and then get ready for the next uh, big showdown. So for Pitt, it was, of course, uh, the meeting with, with uh, Penn State that they were able to win in Heinz Field last year. And Penn State, a much better football team this time around, and pretty much salted this one away quickly at uh, 21 nothing, something in that range, 21-3 early. Uh, James Franklin making some comments uh, that have uh, – uh, bothered a few people, and uh, I, I can imagine why it would. Uh, there have been some hurt feelings around college football this weekend, Baker Mayfield and Ohio State, and when it comes to Penn yeah. State, it's uh, James Franklin. Um, and I'll let you take it from there in explaining what he had to say and how Pitt Nation has responded. Well, here in Pittsburgh, it, it was very hyped up going into the game. Obviously, the rivalry has meant a lot to this area. There's many Pitt fans, many Penn State fans here in Pittsburgh, where, where I'm based out of. And after the game, when you finally get the rivalry back in Penn State after last year's win for Pitt, there kind of was a balloon popping of sorts, especially on the Pitt fan base side, after James Franklin makes comments that, well, this win last year for Pitt over us was like their Super Bowl. But this year for Penn State, our win over Pitt is just like beating Akron. Just, just any old game. We take every game just the same. Beating Pitt's no big deal. And it's caught some flack because it was widely reported for many, many years under Joe Paterno. And then even going into now rejuvenating the rivalry that Penn State wasn't exactly enthused. They felt Pitt was beneath them. And if you look at the last 10, 15 years of college football, even including West Virginia and Virginia Tech, two schools that Penn State are going to see on their schedule in coming years, bringing those rivalries back with some history. Those schools all, we all contended at least one or two years for a national championship. There was double digit years where they were top five, top 10 teams. The numbers are out there and Pitt has kind of been a roller coaster ride of mostly mediocrity the last 10 or 15 years. So you kind of could understand where James Franklin's coming from. Pitt did beat them last year before Penn State really got going and played to their true level, now being a top five team and really being elite. And Pitt has still been that roller coaster ride looking to kind of get respectability. But if you're a Pitt fan, you're not going to love hearing it. Pitt, I did actually think, played better than some would have thought. The spread was 20, 21 points at one point going into that game. Pitt covered the spread and was competitive through most of the game, even though the score didn't always dictate that. Penn State, clearly the better team. Nobody thought Pitt was going to win. When you look at it, James Franklin comments, honestly, what he said is true in a way, because the one way I can support what he said, it's true. If Penn State would have lost that game, the world would have been over. They, they would have lost ranking. They probably would have had to take two, three, four, five weeks, even crawl back anywhere near the top 10 if they ever would have got there. It might have killed their entire season, even in week two. Whereas if Pitt would have beat Penn State, that would have been like a championship for them because they're not going to be winning a championship this year, even though some fans think maybe they could buy for an ACC crown. It did look a little ridiculous, though, because Pitt's quote-unquote Super Bowl last year probably was a win against Clemson, not the win against Penn State. I think that if you're James Franklin, you have to understand your audience. You have to understand a little bit of acumen. So I think we all appreciate in the media coaches who are honest. So he was honest. Uh, I like honesty. Keep it real. I love, I love the honesty, but I think there's there's some decorum there. And the decorum is, so I heard him make the statement before the pit game that we were focused on Akron. Akron is our biggest game. That's what we focus on. Yeah. It's coach speak. But, it, but it's true to a certain extent. Your most important game is the only one that you can play this week. There's no reason to talk about Ohio State or Michigan or anybody else being your most important game because you may not get there if you don't focus and do uh, what you need to do that particular week. But when it comes to Pitt, Penn State, there's a difference. You should give 
some some homage to the rivalry, to the past history, to the in-state rivalry, and some respect to the fans and the um, alumni bases on both sides to say, hey, the, yeah, this is a big deal. Uh, we enjoy the game, and, and and this is something that we need to win and to, to take that pride in, in that part of the rivalry on this side, especially since you just lost last year. It'd be one thing if this was – Ohio State and Ohio University, and they had some kind yeah. of a series going, and Ohio State beat them 52 nothing every year. That's not the case. They play like football. Yes, Penn State, based on a run at the end of last year, and what's expected this year, yes, they have separated team. themselves. But this isn't some kind of longstanding where Penn State's been winning 11 and 12 games every year and Pitt's been down in the dumps. This is just very new territory. It is. I think the other thing that supports what you're saying that even though Penn State feels and its coach speak and they want to win a national championship this year, last year they thought they should have been in the playoff, they want to win a national title this year. And with Barkley and company, they maybe could have a shot, at the very least maybe a playoff or a decent bowl game again, one of those, those New Year Day six. I think that's very possible for them. But they have to deal with conference play. They have to deal with Ohio State, Michigan, those schools. Those are the most important games on their schedule. That's just the truth. And really when it's an out-of-conference game, just like West Virginia against Virginia Tech we'll get to later, losing to Virginia Tech is not that big of a deal because it's an out-of-conference game. The most important games on your schedule are your in-conference games, your in-conference rivalries. Those are the most important games. If Pitt loses to Penn State but beats Clemson again, that's like a Super Bowl. That's a big deal. Then they're back in the race for the ACC. They could then save their season. Whereas if Penn State beats Pitt like they did but loses to Ohio State, loses to Michigan, loses even to Wisconsin or Michigan State, their season's nothing. It doesn't matter. Yes, you win the rivalry, but they want to win the championship. So I get that part of it, but 109,000-plus packed Beaver Stadium for the Pitt game. They didn't pack the game for just anyone because they knew what that rivalry was. They knew all the, the, the fans from Pittsburgh, the Penn State alumni from Pittsburgh that went down there to Happy Valley for that game, and that was the seventh highest attendance number at Beaver Stadium in history since they revamped that stadium and added those seats to get to 100,000 plus. And it's the pit game after not playing them for so many years. That shows you the fans care and there is something different about the game regardless of what Pitt's record is. And that does make it a rivalry. Although so far, Pitt is expressing and showing, even with dealing with us here in Pittsburgh media, that the game is something different to them, no matter what they would say. Pat Narduzzi didn't allow any of his players to speak to myself or anybody in media going into the going into the, the Penn State game. It was a complete media blackout. Got a lot of flack for that because it kind of says to everybody that it is your Super Bowl when you're kind of saying that it shouldn't be because you want to be a competitor to do more than that. If you're going to black out the media. If you're going to tell the players they can't talk to the media for that game, but they can talk to the media for another game, then you're sending the message this is a bigger deal, whereas James Franklin's trying to send the message this is just like any other week. If I'm a player, I'd almost rather play for James Franklin and have that speech because then I know that we're really about business and winning a championship rather than it seems like caring too much about what's going on with somebody else and a program that is better off than you right now. It would be the same sense of, say, the Cleveland Browns and Pittsburgh Steelers rivalry that we saw in the NFL. The Steelers are usually championship contenders, division title contenders, Super Bowl contenders, whereas the Browns are just simply not. They care more about beating the Steelers. If they would beat the Steelers and they don't go to the playoffs, that is their Super Bowl. Whereas if the Steelers beat the Browns and then miss the playoffs, it's a failure. The season's a failure. It so, Mike, I'm going to think there's a – there's a number of reasons in which uh, this game became a tough ticket to get. So it's the best non-conference game on the schedule. So if Penn State was going to turn around the next week and play Oklahoma, Alabama, USC at home, you then it would, by comparison, knock down the pit game. Right. You also have uh, an old crowd in college football. So I don't know that a lot of people understand this, but the demographic following college football is rather old because people latch on to their their school and they they continue to be fans for the rest of their lives while a lot of pro fans gravitate to a different team every few years some some pro fans so there's a lot of 50s and 60s and 70s in that crowd that remember when it was Pitt Penn State and it was 
Hugh Green and Dan Marino and Todd Blackledge and before that and when it really meant something and it was every year. I remember when I was a kid, those players on the field and this was like a top five, top 10 matchup that was for everything, uh, even though there was no conference affiliations at that point at the end of the season. So, and, and also it is in state.